Little Things is the latest HBO acquisition neo-noir crime thriller film that's directed by John Lee Hancock, who's also given us previous works such as The Alamo, The Blind Side, Saving Mr. Banks, and The Founder. This is his newest project release, and this time he brought in a bunch of various actors, three of whom are Academy Award winners, and that cast includes Denzel Washington, Rami Malek, Jared Leto, Natalie Morales, Terry Kinney, and Chris Bauer. The Little Things takes place in 1990 Los Angeles, wherein Denzel Washington plays Kern County Deputy Sheriff Joe Deacon, and Rami Malek plays lead detective Jimmy Baxter, who end up having to pair together to try and solve an ongoing serial killer murder mystery going around town with someone killing off women prostitutes. They scout the crime scenes, investigate for clues, before eventually finding out and pursuing one subject, who's played by Jared Leto. Leto plays a freakish and ridiculing repairman who draws the attention of Baxter and Deacon, and the two begin unraveling backstories and pointing fingers at who is to blame. There are some really substantial and appreciable things about The Little Things, but all in all, the film ends up just being plain average. I think the heaviest dilemma that weighs down the movie is its unoriginal screenplay. Eventually, you can start to nitpick some details and start to predict how events are going to go and whether you're right or wrong, as I was in my case, it doesn't lead to a satisfying outcome. If you've watched similar films of the genre, such as The Goodfellas, The Godfather, The Departed, or especially Seven, then you can understand when I say that this film does not ever approach that level of brilliance and schema that the aforementioned movies have done. But don't get me wrong, there is a lot to compliment about this film. The three leads all give wonderful performances on their end, especially Jared Leto here, who does give some getting under your skin attributes. Washington and Malik do what they can with their characters, but both of their developments are just so limited and obscure to the side that you don't really get to see the two shine as best as they can. These are Academy Award winning actors. Use them. But at least Leto's character lets him dive deep into a harrowing, spine-chilling persona. The interrogation scene between the three of these guys is my favorite scene in this project, wherein the close-up, confined shots, the eerie and puzzling quietness, and the high tension all in the air was delivered marvelously. The direction of the atmospheric setup is also ravishing, with many of the nighttime scenes being executed with exemplary, high saturated color usage. And this is maybe a strange analysis to even point out, but the daylight scenes were usually noticeably more monotone, undemanding, and boring in comparison to the exciting, anxiety-fueled nighttime segments. I noticed this disparity because for a majority of the film, it does take an unhurried, slow-moving pace whenever it's just the detectives talking when the sun's out, but then things would immediately start to pick right up with interest whenever the sun goes down. I don't think this was obviously deliberately done, nor did they have like a nighttime and a daytime director, but that unequal pacing literally did detract from the enjoyment of the film by creating this off-balance style. A few miscellaneous notes on this film too, I love Rami Malek's facial expressions here. There's some scenes where he's visibly trying to look very frustrated and he's just trying to pop a blood vessel, but it just ends up like him looking like he's trying to hold a giant shit, so thank you for some quality laughs. The final act is the most interesting segment of the film, with Leto shrewdly creating an unsettling ambience on his character's intentions. But as I mentioned before, the slow burner acts up until this section leave it with just enough interest to see how it all ends. And lastly, I think the causation of the title of this film is so, so stupid. It's titled The Little Things because there's two separate instances in the movie where Washington lectures Malik about the little stuff in life and how it'll keep you un unfulfilled, but I swear on everything. And both times when he talks about it, it literally just sounds like some of the Vegas generalized speech naivety that I just know someone wrote in there like this one's gonna hit and it just takes a serious scene and becomes a hard chuckle moment if anything. A better title could have just been The Prostitute Murderer and it would have been marketed the same way instead of The Little Things, but whatever. Anyways, I digress. The Little Things is worth checking out if you're a fan of any of the three leads especially, or if you enjoy serial killer focused storylines. If you fall outside of those two groups, then hey, you might even dig it. Though there's some stylistic choices and a few proficient scenes where they're really worthy of viewing. As a whole though, it's three-fourths of building and building and building for a lackluster fourth piece conclusion. I give The Little Things an optimistic five, and in that it's it's an all right but middling, albeit unoriginal crime thriller film. HBO is going to keep pumping and dishing these movies out though this year, so let's see what they got next coming up. And until next time, I hope you enjoy February. Much love.